Hey, it's Sean from P2R. Today I wanted to do a video on showing you guys all the different connecting rods that we offer here at P2R for the J-Series engines in Pacific. For the J-Series platform, we cover all the different engines as far as the connecting rod goes. We go from the J25 all the way up to the J37. One thing a lot of people don't know, actually people don't even know the J25 even really exists. That's actually a really small stroke crank. One thing I wanted to cover is basically all the J-Series are going to be the same deck height. What really changes between every motor is just going to be the stroke and the bore. Since the stroke is increasing while the deck height remains the same, Honda's actually doing that by reducing the connecting rod length as we go up in the displacement. So from a J25 is going to have the longest connecting rod, whereas a J37 is going to actually have the shortest connecting rod. If you actually overlay these to each other, you can almost actually see that the, well, you can actually see the big difference in length between a J37 connecting rod and a J30, a J25, sorry. In the front here, this is going to be our I-beam connecting rods. And in the rear here, we're going to be our H-beam. Right now, we currently offer the H-beam for the J32, J35, and J37. We don't offer the H for the J30 or J25 at least not at the moment. A common question a lot of people ask is basically, what is the difference between an I-beam, an H-beam, or any of the different beams for connecting rods? It's actually pretty simple and pretty easy to understand once you know. If I was to take this connecting rod and just cut it right down the center here, and we were gonna look at it straight on, it would actually take the shape of an I. If we were to take an H-beam rod like this one and cut it in the center, it's gonna look like a letter H. Same goes for the different connecting rods, whether it's an X-beam or anything like that. You cut the beam in half and you look at it straight on and that's going to tell you what kind of rod it is. All of our connecting rods are going to come with an ARP 2000 rod bolt and the benefit to that is obviously the ARP bolts are made here in the USA. It's a high quality bolt. Our actual connecting rods are machined with the ARP bolts installed. Smaller brands selling connecting rods that aren't focused on continuing to improve the quality of the rods. Like if you bought a rod that came with a Chinese bolt and you try to switch it to an ARP bolt, yeah, it'll work a lot of the times. But one thing people don't realize is connecting rods are machined. They're machined with a bolt installed and they're torqued to spec. So if that Chinese bolt is going to 40 foot pounds, for example, and you go and you put an ARP, which goes to 50 foot pounds, you're gonna actually get a little bit of oval in here at the circle. So you always wanna get a connecting rod that is actually machined with the bolts installed at the right torque. Why do we offer both H and I-beam? So for us, our I-beam is actually gonna be our stronger connecting rod. Our H-beam is gonna be a little bit weaker. However, when I say weaker, it's still gonna hold a lot of horsepower. We do the H-beams more for our, our naturally aspirated bills, and we do the I-beam for our turbo setups. Though a lot of guys do opt for the H-beam as well for turbo setups. We, we've had guys go up to like 800 horsepower on these without any break-in, bending, or any failures up to this point, which has been really good. Um, I think we sold, I mean, over the years, we sold a lot of connecting rods, and to this day, we haven't had any failures. I don't really give an exact horsepower rate in, but I always tell guys if they're going after big horsepower, let's just go ahead and go on an I-beam. If we're going 700 horsepower or less, I typically say let's just do the H-beam. Our I-beam connecting rod is going to be quite a bit heavier than our H-beam connecting rod. And with the weight comes more material, essentially. And that's why our I-beam is stronger than our H. It just has a little bit more material there, and it allows it to sustain a little bit more abuse. Speaking of weights, I'm going to go ahead and just weigh the different connecting rods and show you guys the weight difference from an H and an I, and also just go ahead and cover them all. Since I do have the rod bolts out of the connecting rods, I'm going to go ahead and just weigh the bolts first and just get a weight on the bolts. So basically, we have 56 grams for the rod bolts. So. That's going to be the number that's added on to every one. So the first rod I'm going to take here is going to be our J25. And it's an I-beam. So I can tell you this is going to be our heaviest rod because this is the longest connecting rod. And it's the longest rod and it's an I-beam. So this one is coming in at 630 grams. I'm going to now move on to our J30. Which is coming at 604 grams. One thing that I wanted to mention is the J30 and the J32 connecting rods are basically the same length. The actual bore here is actually what changes. And also a J30 and J32 also run the same stroke crankshaft. What actually makes the displacement between 3.0 and 3.2 is actually gonna be your bore. With that, these two are gonna be very similar in weight, though I suspect that the J30 is a little bit lighter because we have a bigger uh, bearing housing on it. Actually, uh, the J32 is 654 grams. It's a little bit heavier than the J30. Let's go to the J35. And 
we're at 600 grams. As we get shorter and shorter, our weights are coming down a little bit. And a J37 is 599 grams. So I'm just gonna work my way back along this way. We're gonna go ahead and switch over to the H-beam connecting rod. So this H-beam connecting rod is gonna be 532 grams. So it's 532 grams versus the 599 in the I-beam. Most popular rod that we use is obviously the J35. More people are doing J35 builds than just about anything else. This one's weighing at 536 grams. And then the J32 is coming at 578. On our website, if you're actually looking for connecting rods, we have our, these are the part numbers for every rod that we offer. So if you're looking for a J37 rod, it's gonna be our RD003. If you just type that in the search box, that's gonna take you right over to the connecting rods. It's gonna bring up both our H and our I beam. Basically, to signify the difference, we have a dash H or a dash I that comes in after the part number. So it's really easy to understand which rod it's there. One thing you'll notice as well is on our H beam connecting rods, they're a little bit more pricey than our I beam, even though our I beams technically can hold a little bit more horsepower. And the reason for that is you'll notice that these are a little bit shinier. These actually, on our H beams, we do what we call super finishing. Super finishing is a process that kind of gets a little bit, um, the edges a little bit deburred a little bit better. It brightens up the metal and they almost look like they're polished. Why do we super finish those? Well, we figure in a naturally aspirated setup, you want to try to gain any horsepower you can get. And we have something we call oil shedding, right? Where when the engine is rotating in the motor, oil is getting splashed onto connecting rod and that actually adds weight to the connecting rod as well. Well, with the polish effect, that helps shed the oil faster and helps keep weight off of the connecting rod. Keeping that weight off of the connecting rod, in theory, should add more horsepower. And for a naturally aspirated setup, we're after every ounce. Uh, we don't do it on the, on the eye, even though we could. It's just because the pricing starts to go up. And on turbo setups, I mean, really, that's not really gonna be anything that you can even see the difference as far as horsepower or anything like that goes. So we definitely felt the need for the, on the H, but on the I, I just don't think it's um, necessary. When it comes to balancing a V engine, the most important part that people are gonna do is you have to add weight or subtract weight on a crankshaft. In the case of the J series, to be honest, you're almost always gonna be adding weight to your crank. The factory rod is literally pencil thin. You know, this is a factory J35 rod. I mean, you can look at that next to our connecting rod and you can see the difference, to be honest. These things don't hold any sort of horsepower. They're always bending, breaking on guys once you start crossing that 400 horsepower mark. And in reality, being that it's still pencil thin, if we were to go ahead and weigh this connecting rod, it's only 523 grams with the bolts in it. So we're gonna be heavier on all of our connecting rods compared to the stock rod. Obviously our rods are gonna hold a lot more abuse, hold a lot more horsepower. These are never really gonna work out really well. I've seen these things even snap in a high compression, naturally aspirated setup. They just don't really work that well. Aluminum connecting rod, you may be able to get down to this weight or even a little bit less, so you can actually shave a little bit of weight off of the crankshaft. But in reality is, when you go to your machine shop for, or if you send us your build to do, we're gonna always be adding weight to your crankshaft and um, to get it all balanced properly. If you wanna find out any more information about our connecting rods or any other products that we offer, please reach out on our social media or on our website, powerofracing.com, and I'll see you guys again for another video soon.